TikTok was launched in 2016 and since then has become one of the biggest social media apps in history. By 2020, it had already accumulated over 800 million active users, which makes it the seventh most popular social media platform in the world. Most kids nowadays want to get famous and become TikTok stars, and some of them take it too seriously. In today's video, I will tell you a story about how one boy murdered his neighbor for TikTok fame. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Let's begin! In 2018, a 16-year-old teenager named Zachary Latham moved to Thornhill Road in Vineland, New Jersey to live with his grandparents. He wanted to become a TikTok star, and to achieve his goal, he began doing and documenting all kinds of mischief. At first, he got into trouble for reckless driving in the neighborhood. William Durham, who was his neighbor, got fed up and asked his grandparents to talk to him about the issue. Zachary's grandparents asked him to stop his reckless driving and to go and apologize to Mr. Durham in person. Although Zachary delighted his grandparents by agreeing to do so, he never apologized to the neighbor and continued to drive recklessly. This marked the beginning of almost a two-year-long fight between Zachary, his grandparents, and the Durhams. Zachary not only didn't slow down with his despicable behavior, but increased it in intensity, capturing it on TikTok for his increasing followers. William Durham had a wife, Catherine, and they were raising two kids. All they wanted was to have a quiet life in the suburbs of New Jersey, but Zachary was doing everything he could to stop them from doing so. The heat of the conflict was approaching its peak on April 6, 2020. On that day, Zachary got into a heated confrontation with Catherine, recorded it all, and posted the clip on TikTok. He was not only plain disrespectful, but kept calling Mrs. Durham Karen and ignored what she was saying. As sad as it is, the clip went viral, accumulating over 3 million views in just a few weeks. The comments began flowing through and suggested Zachary to mess with Catherine more, or even worse, to egg her house or to cut her tires. As this was the first TikTok clip that went viral, Zachary's motivation to misbehave only increased. He might have finally found the formula for online success, and he's not going to let this opportunity slip away. Just a few days later, he drove through the Durham's house to taunt Catherine, and a few days after that, William Durham Jr. came outside to talk to Zachary. He was a 21-year-old son of the Durham's and told Zachary to get out of his car. As Zachary was nothing more than a provocator, he remained in his car and told William that he's carrying a knife. Looking back from the upcoming tragedy, him carrying a knife was the first indicator of a potential murder he's about to do. At this time, even the local police got involved and questioned both Zachary and William Durham Jr. But no presses were charged and Zachary was allowed to continue his misbehavior. Catherine reportedly told the police that Zach would stop in front of her driveway, rev the engine and blow her a kiss before speeding up. He was the nightmare in the neighborhood, but nothing could be done about that. As time went on, the Durhams tried to reach out to the Vineland Police Department and filed multiple complaints, but they were dismissed because apparently the courts couldn't function because of the ongoing pandemic. What's even worse is that Zachary Latham was known for his misdemeanor. At that time, he had already had a history of criminal mischief, simple assault, and even terroristic threats. His troubled past didn't stop him from serving in the Army National Guard, but it was obvious that sooner or later, his crimes would get more and more serious. If he had evaded law enforcement several times, and his poor behavior is generating him views and followers on TikTok, why stop? As it was getting overwhelming for the neighbors and police didn't help, Mr. Durham decided to act himself. On May 4th, 2020, Zachary was driving his pickup truck and was thinking how he can screw with the Durhams this day. Luckily for him, he saw Durham's 17-year-old son riding a bike. Zachary swerved the truck at him and drove away. The son told Mr. Durham about it, and that was it. He decided to confront Zachary himself. 
he got into his own truck and blocked the road for Zachary. Catherine was trying to film the incident on her phone, but Zachary threw an elbow and pushed her, dropping her phone on the ground. Then he proceeded to drive back home, but Mr. Durham drove right after him. While this type of confrontation might not seem ideal, you got to understand that Mr. Durham endured the torture by Zachary for almost two entire years. Imagine living through the pandemic with such a next door neighbor. As Zachary got home, he went inside to grab a knife and a stun gun, while the Durham family came on his porch and was met by Zach's wife. Don't ask me why an 18 year old is already married but his wife got into a verbal altercation with the Durhams. She kept yelling at them and filmed the entire scene. Soon after Zachary returned outside, he shot the stun gun at one of the sons. It prompted Mr. Durham to get physical with Zachary, who cut his right arm. As the blood was shed, Zachary wanted to stop the fight and walked into his garage, but Mr. Durham followed inside. There, where the tragedy happened. Zachary stabbed Mr. Durham below the armpit, puncturing his lung, which resulted in death. While the Durham family says all of it was provoked, and Zach's wife was filming it to put on TikTok for fame, Zachary got charged with manslaughter, not murder. The Durham family itself got charged with assaulting and trespassing, making this entire case even more complex. As the Durham family engaged in this physical conflict themselves, it helps Zachary's lawyer to build a case that the death of Mr. Durham was a result of self-defense. What's also crazy is that Zachary has avoided a single day behind the bars, as the judge ruled that there is no need for pre-trial detention. The trial will take place in May 2021, so at the very least, Zach will roam the streets free for the next several months. It's sad that this situation could have possibly been avoided altogether. Vineland police knew about Zachary's unsettling past, but didn't do anything about it. Whether you think this entire story is an extreme example of the negative side of social media and trying to get famous, or you think that Zach indeed acted in self-defense, we can all agree that it was a tragedy. A tragedy that cost the life of a husband and a father of two. Thanks for watching. That was it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Trust me, there are many more fascinating videos coming your way. You don't want to miss any. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed your daily dose of intelligent entertainment today. Since you're here, why don't you go ahead and enter our giveaway for a chance to win $100 worth of Amazon gift cards. All you need to do is like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment down below letting us know what fascinating topic you'd like us to take on next. From eccentric characters in history, to inexplicable supernatural mysteries, to the true stories of life-changing events. Here at The Story Of, we're obsessed with everything strange, spooky, and extraordinary. And we want more! If you think you have an excellent idea for our next video, we'd love to hear it. Just let us know down below in the comments what you'd like to see next on this channel. Our favorite suggestion will win an Amazon gift card worth $100 and a mention in our next video. Just drop your best suggestion in the comment section. Give us a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to our channel to win. Have a nice one. See you next time.